Sarah, I, I know your question was about how, you know, how fibroid is related to um, hormone or this uh, fibroid effect um, hormone. Fibroid is a growth in the muscular layer of our uterus called the myometrium. It's actually responsive also to hormone. That's why if the fibroid happens when you are still men menstruating, it will also respond to estrogen and progesterone and so you will bleed heavily during menstruation. You will experience pain in this area, in the pelvic um, pain we call it, because especially if the fibroid is big because it will impinge on your the surrounding structures like your colon, it may cause constipation or your pelvic nerve for example, or it may cause pressure on your urinary bladder causing frequent urination. And also this happens when there is estrogen dominance, if there's more estrogen than progesterone. When does those happen? Number one is during perimenopause. I would say the imbalance between estrogen and progesterone is kind of relative because we're not ovulating frequently. So there's more estrogen compared to progesterone. So you're also more prone to developing fibroid if you have more estrogen. If you have hormone replacement therapy, that's one. And again, if you have compromised liver function, because remember, it is the liver that metabolizes excess estrogen in our body. So if your estrogen is not healthy, then um, you will also be prone to developing fibroid. And if you are not supplementing yourself with B-complex vitamins, the, it will also predispose you to developing fibroid because uh, the B-complex vitamins kind of like help the liver um, function. So I hope that answers your question that, that fibroid is one of the most common problem that women face and it can be managed depending on the size. Usually we do surgery. There are fibroids that grow up to 25 pounds. So that one you have to remove the entire uterus to relieve you of your symptoms. Right now I want to discuss stress. I want to explain that stress is very important because we have to manage that because it affects our health. Stress is not bad in itself. I would say it is neutral. It is a gift from the Lord to protect us from danger. Stress has three stages. We have the so-called stage one or the alarm reaction. You know, when you get startled, when there's a big sound or fire, usually when the perceived threat is over, then our body, you know, returns to normal. So for a while, when we experience that kind of threat, our adrenal glands, these are almond-shaped glands um, located on top of our kidneys right here. And they're very important structure for energy, for strength, for even for motivation, for, for sustaining our daily activities. If you are experiencing chronic stress, for example, you are diagnosed with cancer, if you are suffering a loss of a loved one or a divorce, long-term relationship issues, your stress can linger for more than 48 hours. In fact, the second stage follows this, the resistance phase of stress. And guess what? It can range up to 20 years and it creates like tremendous havoc to our adrenal glands. Why? Because our adrenal glands will now secrete cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone. In the alarm reaction, it secretes dopamine, epinephrine, and norepinephrine just for us to cope in that alarming situation. But guess what? Chronic, long-term stress repels our adrenal gland to secrete cortisol. Cortisol is Detrimental because number one, it can destroy your bones. It can promote osteoporosis. Number two, it can dump all the sugar into your bloodstream, promoting diabetes. And uh, number three, it can cause the so-called adrenal fatigue. Meaning to say that our adrenal will try to secrete cortisol every time there is a demand in our body to cope with stress, like physical illness, you know, uh, emotional stress any kind of stresses, environmental stress, you know, mercury, aluminum, and all that. But long-term, we will exhaust our adrenal gland. It's like it will no longer secrete enough cortisol to fight stress. And here's what happens. Let's say you are 46 to 52 years old, and you have a deficient estrogen. Now, there's a hormonal imbalance secondary to 
uh, diminishing function of your ovaries, for example. If you are in a normal, you know, you're, you're managing your stress well, the adrenal gland has the capacity to produce steroid hormone precursor, like your dehydroepiandrosterone and androstenedione. And this estrogen and progesterone precursor will help our ovary during menopause to produce estrogen and progesterone. Guess what? If you are suffering adrenal fatigue secondary to chronic emotional stress, anxiety, and depression, then these estrogen precursors, instead, uh, the adrenal gland will channel the pathway into this estrogen precursor into producing cortisol. So your DHEA and androstenedione is being shunted to producing progesterone and then cortisol and then the aldosterone. But guess what? All those hormones, they cause high blood pressure and retention of fluid in our body. I just want to end with this. They did a study, 28,000 people. Perception is very important. Okay, they were interviewed, like, how do you perceive stress? So long term, they followed up this group of people. And those who perceived stress as positive, like, you know, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to, you know, to improve ourselves, to, to persevere, you know, to finish college, to pursue our goals, because those are stressful situations. And then the other group is perceived stress as a threat to their health. Meaning to say that the more you consider stress as an early cause of death will specifically cause death in the long term. So true enough, those people that has a negative perception of stress died early. So what are the symptoms of adrenal fatigue? Um, ladies, if you experience this, insomnia. You wake up at night many times. Weight gain. Memory loss, like early signs of dementia. You're always tired. You're always yawning. Anxiety, depression is also a symptom. Um, increase or decrease in your blood sugar. That's also a symptom of adrenal fatigue. There are certain things that we can do to kind of like support the adrenal gland. And one is taking the B-complex vitamins. Number two is uh, taking a high-dose vitamin C. Um, you can increase your dose from actually 2,000 to 4,000 milligrams daily. And of course, your, your exercise. Don't forget your exercise. You always share this, that every time you do 150 minutes of exercise per week, you have the 36 full ATP for every molecule of glucose that you can use to increase your metabolism and provide energy and strength. And also, I would add, you know, that our worship and trust in Jesus. I was reading today in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10, when Paul was saying that, I am afflicted in many ways, but not crushed. He said that I am perplexed, but not driven to despair. He said that I am persecuted, but not forsaken. I am struck down but not destroyed because I carry the death of Jesus in my body. And the same death, he's saying that he's also carrying the life, the resurrected life of Jesus in himself. So I am saying that we can do, we can partner with God in reducing stress by everything from exercise and supplement and trusting in Jesus. But also what Paul is saying is that you know, I have experienced, name it, all the kind of stress to the point of facing death. But just because mm -hmm. I trust Jesus, then now I can actually fight any kind of stress. So I want to end with this. Whatever you experience, we can always rely on Jesus that he will carry us through, that he will help us and he will deliver us from all kinds of challenges in our life.